you want to know the depth of a particular place. So you take a boat with a GPS, and echo sounder. You measure the depth has 10 meters in the morning, and in the evening, you find the depth of the same place is 6 meters. Confused, you decide to go out again the next day morning, and you find different depth again. If you are confused, worry not, you are simply missing one of the crucial elements in measuring depth, that is tide. Welcome back in the third part of this video series. In my previous two videos, we have discussed various phases of the moon, and how the moon has a direct effect on the tides. We have also seen, various types of tide that happen around the world. Today, we will see how tide affects our measurement of depth. From where we will measure tide, and how to apply the tide, in our depth recordings. We will also learn, what the depths as written in the navigation charts, means. Tide is a vertical rise and fall of water level. To know the tide level, we must physically measure the water level, as they rises and falls. There are many methods, old and new, to measure the water level. We will discuss the same, in later part of the video. The critical question is, from where do you measure the level of water? Suppose, if you want to measure the height of a person, how do you do it? You measure the height from the floor on which the person is standing, to the top of this head. But if the same person stands on a chair, then what is his height? Do you again measure from the floor? Or you measure from the chair to the top of his head? There is no right or wrong answer. From where you measure height, depends on your requirement, of what you want to achieve. Suppose a person is standing on top of Mount Everest, and if I ask, how high the person is, what will be your answer? The person may be six feet tall, but how high is he? So you see, how you ask the question, and in what context, is also very important in determining a height. Tide pole is a graduated wooden or metal pole, used in older times, to know the level of the water. The pole is generally tied on the side of a jetty or pier, submerged in water, and we could read the readings on the pole, where the water surface touches the graduation mark. But the readings on the tide pole, is with respect to the zero mark of the pole. And if you lift or lower the pole, the readings will change. So, only this tide pole readings is not good enough to know the actual tide of that place. We need to connect the readings to an established, and unmovable place on the land, nearby our tide pole. This place is called a benchmark. A benchmark is simply a physical mark, from where the vertical datum is defined. So a benchmark denotes, how high or low, a vertical datum is, from that particular mark. Benchmarks are generally established, near all the major ports and harbors. It takes years of continuous observations, to establish a vertical datum. Port authorities maintain the physical site of the benchmark, and keep the records of datum, with respect to that benchmark. The benchmark data is generally available with the government hydrographic department, for that particular country. Let us now understand what is a datum. In general, there are two types of datum. Horizontal and vertical. Horizontal datum is a reference point, from where you measure where on earth you are. We will discuss more about horizontal datum at a later video. Let us first understand the vertical datum. Vertical datum is a reference line, from where we measure how high or how low we are, with respect to that datum line. In general everyday life, we do measure many different things. Take that person, who was standing on the chair for quite some time now. In general, that person's own height is measured, from the bottom of the heel, and not from the floor, or the chair for that matter. If I ask, how high is a building, then it is generally measured from the ground up. So in these cases, a person's heel bottom is a datum, for measuring his height. The immediate ground level, is the datum from where we can measure the height of a building. Height of a mountain or a hill station, is generally quoted either from mean sea level, or mean high water. Mean sea level, as the name implies, literally refers the mean of the sea level. Mean sea level or MSL as it is widely known, is a very important vertical datum, which is relatively easy to observe and calculate. There are many such vertical datums, that are used in many different purposes. A tidal datum is a standard elevation, defined by a certain phase of the tide. 
Tidal datums are used as references, to measure local water levels, and should not be extended into other places without proper measurements. In order that they may be recovered when needed, such datums are referenced to fixed points, known as benchmarks. Now that we have our benchmark, it says that, so and so datum, is so many meters below this reference line, on this benchmark. Normally, it would refer to mean sea level, and in some rare cases, it may also refer to chart datum. Let us now look at some of the common datums, that we use for our purpose. From this demonstration you can see, all the levels or datums are, observable various states of tide, except a chart datum. A chart datum can be, any of the observable state of tide, like lowest astronomical tide, or the mean low water spring, or it can be something entirely different. A chart datum is normally a mutually agreed datum, between the parties, which is used to reduce the tide, from the measured depth, before it is printed on a chart. A chart datum can be an engineering datum, for offshore construction, spread over multiple regions, far from the origin of the datum at the shore. Normally this is done, to maintain a seamless engineering data, over multiple offshore oil and gas fields. Now, charting a depth with regards to a common chart datum, far from sure, has its benefit as well as drawback. On one hand, you have a seamless engineering design, and on other, the depth may not be as accurate as it should be, because the datum is carried forward from shore, to deep ocean miles away. But far offshore, you have no benchmark to establish a tidal datum. And if you are in a hurry, the best option is to observe mean sea level, and measure tide from MSL, which will result in a positive tide, and a negative tide. Or you can observe for a full lunar cycle, or 29 days to calculate lowest astronomical tide, and use the same to deduct the tide. Let us now see, how we can establish a mean sea level, where we do not have any benchmark to start with. First, let us mark a line on a solid wall, or a point on stable permanent platform like jetty. Next, we find the best place to set up a tide gauge. The place should not dry up during low tide, and not directly open to sea waves or stagnant. With the help of an auto level, we measure the height difference between our benchmark on the jetty, and the zero of the tide pole. Now, let us keep observing tide, and noting it down, say either every 15 or 30 minutes or every hour, for next several days. Ideally, a 29 days period of observation of rise and fall of water, is good to establish the mean of the rise and fall, and we will find mean sea level. Congratulation, you have established your first vertical datum. There are other quicker methods to establish MSL, this is called Dudson filter method. With this method you observe tide for 39 hours, and then you apply some mathematical filters on those 39 observation, to arrive at mean sea level. This method of establishing mean sea level, is widespread in the offshore industries, for offshore construction projects. Similar way, to observe a tide near shore, you just place your tide gauge at a suitable location, and find the height difference between the benchmark, and zero of your tide gauge. This diagram shows, how to calculate what your tide is, with respect to your tidal datum and then calculate the height of the zero of the tide gauge, with respect to the tidal datum. In this picture we see, that the zero of the tide gauge is 1.15 meters below the datum. That means, when the tide gauge shows water level at 4 meters, the actual tide will be 4 meters minus 1.15 meters equals 2.85 meters. In this next picture, we see that a boat is doing survey, and the water depth was measured as 10 meters, and at that point of time, we observed tide to be 2.85 meters as demonstrated before. So that we deduct the tide from the measured depth, and we find 7.15 meters to be our charted depth. Charted depth in the sense that, we print that depth on the chart. Let us summarize, what we learned from this. Tides are generally, above the selected tidal datum, except of course MSL, where the tide will be below, and above the datum. Depths on the chart will be below the selected datum. So what that implies. If we see a depth of 12 meters on a chart, what that means. 
it means that, no matter whatever the tidal status is, there will always be 12 meters of water, on that particular spot. So, the mariners can plan their voyage, and entry and exit to and from the port, according to their draft of the vessel, and tide. In a scenario of a place, where there is no benchmark, and no historic data available in the vicinity, you can transfer the data from a known tidal station. This is called transfer of sounding datum. The known tidal station should be within 16 kilometers, of the new place. Establish tide gauges at both the places, and carry out simultaneous tide observation, for either four highs and three lows, or four lows and three high waters. It is advised to carry out this exercise during spring tide, to take advantage of the highest ranges of the tide. Then, you need to apply some filters, and calculate the tidal datum, in relation to the known station. Please note, that this method of transfer, is suitable mainly for semi-diurnal tide. With the advancement of GPS technology, the time to establish a tidal datum has decreased significantly. You can have simultaneous GPS height observation, one at known benchmark and another at a new station and simply transfer the height of the known benchmark along with the datum, to the new station. Let's say, you are surveying, between two known tidal stations. And each station is 15 kilometers away on either side of your survey area. You do not have the time, or the place to establish a tidal station, in your area. In that case, you need to record tide, at both the known stations simultaneously, as you are surveying. And then, during processing of your depth, you can apply a go tidal tide, or a distance based weighted average tide, to your depth. In offshore situation, if you have an offshore royal platform, you can observe tide there. You can establish an MSL, with the help of 39 hours observation. Then observe tide from MSL, or you carry out 29 days of tide observation, to establish lowest astronomical tide, LAT, and observe tide as per that datum. In the absence of any offshore structure, best solution is to observe GPS height continuously as you survey, and then process the data to establish MSL, in your survey area, and deduce tide as per MSL. Earth Gravitational Model 2008, EGM 2008, can be very helpful in this case, as it tells us the difference between ellipsoid and geoid, at any particular place. In open ocean geoid, and MSL is almost at the same level, and this data can be very helpful, in the absence of any datum. I hope, you gained some insights into the workings of tide and its usage, and how mariners, and surveyor use the tide to their advantage. Do let me know, if you have any question, in remarks below. I will be back soon, with another episode of exciting learnings. Please do not forget to subscribe, and press the bell icon. Let us learn at least one thing a day, and share the knowledge by sharing this video.